Well, it was fun while it lasted. Well, I can tell this is gonna be fun. <sighs> you with me, Control? We're going in. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dead video game industry trends. Are you a fan of this video? Be sure to subscribe to catch our latest show, The Bolt to E3. Four gamers take an epic road trip from San Fran to LA, gaming all the way. Watch the whole series now on Watch Mojo. For this list, we'll be looking at those trends among the video game industry, which were once extremely popular and or revolutionary, which have since significantly declined in popularity to the point of being basically dead. To be eligible, the trend needs to have been once very popular in the industry, but has since died or is in the midst of dying at the time of this video's release. Anything to declare. I hate you. I get that a lot. Number 10. Blockbuster Video Exclusives Remember Blockbuster? Or, you know, renting video games in general? Yeah, that was fun for a while. And believe it or not, Blockbuster was powerful and influential enough to actually have exclusive titles. Granted, most of those games were total trash, but the point still stands, right? Some exclusives were updated versions of previously released games, like Clay Fighter Tournament Edition for the Super Nintendo. Bad Mr. Frosty wins the battle! But they were also completely exclusives like Eek the Cat and Razor Freestyle Scooter. Yeah, like we said, they weren't very good. Number 9. Gimmicky Third-Party Controllers You force. You. You force. While they made for a fine collector's item, and while they probably go for some good money on eBay, the bell has tolled for the gimmicky third-party controller. These were seemingly being released every week back in Nintendo's Prime, with crap like the Power Glove and the Rollin' Rocker being especially notable. Power Glove, everything else is child's play. They continued throughout the decades, though, with gimmicky controllers like Resident Evil 4's Chainsaw or the Wii Bowling Ball. While you can still find them here and there for specific games if you look hard enough, the heyday of the third-party controller has long passed. You, 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 you force. Number 8. Everything is Zombies I'm so tired of Nazi zombies. It's so overused. While we definitely hit a pocket of zombie love for about a decade or two, the enthusiasm for the undead is finally shuffling to its inevitable death and zombie games are going down with it. While absolutely everything had to be zombie themed for a few years, including zombie specific games and zombie centric additions to games like Red Dead Redemption and Call of Duty, the trend is finally <clears throat> dying. I told you I wasn't on the menu. Recent examples include Dead Rising 4 receiving very lukewarm reactions and Telltale's The Walking Dead failing to sustain mainstream interest. While there are definitely a few holdouts, the undead threat seems to be basically over. Ah! That could have sucked a lot worse. Number 7. Live action FMV games and cutscenes. Ah! Ah! Full motion video was once considered to be a revolutionary feat in gaming, as defenders argued that having actors display the action on screen would not only legitimize video games as an art form, but also provide a sense of realism unheard of in gaming at the time. Well, seeing as you don't really see FMV anymore, there's a reason for its failure. That's why I made it one of those, uh, prohibition, um... Prohibited access discretionary control zones! These include the small budget and subsequent cheesy production values, limited storage space, and the fact that the videos always appeared fuzzy and kind of jerky. These days, while AAA gaming has steered away from them, they're still fun to look back on for some hilariously bad acting. You did a really good job. This case was just too weird. Number 6. Arcades on every street corner. Daytona USA. It's fast. It's intense. It's exhilarating. It's out of control. Unless you're in Japan, who still love them some arcades, you'll be hard pressed to find a functioning, profitable arcade anywhere near you live. Back in the golden age of arcades, aka the late 70s and early 80s, they were absolutely massive. And a machine could probably be found within five feet of wherever you were standing at the time. Centipede? Who knows where that guy is? with titles like Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, and Space Invaders making huge waves in pop culture. While there are definitely still arcades out there, they no longer receive game-changing titles and are seen as kinda tacky at worst and passive entertainment at best. Number 5. Realistic Brown Color Palettes It's the brownest game that we've ever played So many colors all in the same shade for some weird reason, between 1995 and 2005, we all accepted that the color brown was absolutely badass. Grittier games were desaturating the hell out of their color palettes, and what we were left with was brown tinted everything, which denoted dramatic realism or something we don't really know. No tomorrow, no tomorrow. 
Games like Gears of War, Quake, and Shadow of the Colossus definitely experimented with and helped popularize this trope. And it seemed like every action game released in the mid to late 2000s had some form of brown filter applied to it. Luckily for our eyes, this trend seems to have finally died down. The graphics are dirty, just like your mom. Number 4. Hint Hotlines Get ready to have your minds blown, kids. Before the glory days of the internet, instant access to knowledge, and the safety of anonymity behind a screen, if you didn't have a strategy guide or a handy magazine that happened to have what you needed, you actually had to call another human being if you were stuck in a video game. Yes, this was a harrowing time. Various games employed hint hotlines to provide clues and instant gratification for those who were stuck on a particularly difficult puzzle, or for the lost gamer who just didn't know where to go next. Can you imagine how difficult some of those phone calls must have been? It boggles the mind. For Super Mario Bros. 3, look for white blocks. If you stand on one and press down for about 5 seconds, Mario will fall through it and go behind the scenery for a short time. Number 3. Corny Commercials <laughs> to save the world single-handedly. Clever! Remember when we said that gamers were looking to validate video games as an art form? Well, commercials like these weren't gonna do them any favors. In the late 80s and 90s, video game commercials were, for the lack of a better word, friggin' dumb, filled with hyperactive screaming children, overzealous graphics and sound effects, and exaggerated voiceover work. Since then, the industry's actually gone in the completely opposite direction, with commercials of creepy baby dolls, melodrama, and big-budget action set pieces being the order of the day. Oh well, guess it's better than the corny stuff? It's a very, very Number 2. Motion Controls Ah, uh, motion controls you were supposed to be the next big step in gaming evolution, the new toy to usher in a newfound sense of immersion by seamlessly connecting the player to the game world. It was not that. Looks like we're having a little interference here. Somebody out there using wireless. Instead, we got goofy sports and dancing games and a bunch of other titles that barely even worked. After the Wii's massive success, Microsoft and Sony tried getting in on the action with the Kinect and Move respectively, but we all know how those turned out, right? A decade later, no one really respects motion controls, Microsoft has all but abandoned the Kinect, and well, Nintendo's still plugging away with them. Gotta give them credit. Well done, Zelda. But you have a lot to learn before you become a master. Number 1. Mascot Platformers what? <laughs> It's arguable that the day of console mascots are over, but it's most certainly undeniable that mascot platformers are long dead. There was a time when everyone seemingly wanted to cash in on Mario and Sonic's bandwagon, with characters like Gex the Gecko, Croc, Banjo-Kazooie, Crash Bandicoot, and Spyro the Dragon. The fact that the most recent entries in this genre are all essentially remasters and spiritual successors that are banking on nostalgia rather than novelty only really helps illustrate the fact that this trend is truly a thing of the past. Sure, Mario and Sonic are still going strong, well, okay, Mario is still going strong, but that's basically it. Nintendo's always doing its own thing, anyway. Do you agree with our picks? Don't forget to check out The Bolt to E3, a brand new series from WatchMojo, where four gamers take an epic road trip from San Fran to LA, gaming all the way.